Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Online multiplayer games are extremely popular, but they all have the same problem. The internet is really slow compared to local networks. But when I say slow, then I don't mean the bandwidth. It's not about how fast you can download or upload a file. When I say that the internet is slow, then I mean that the time a single bit needs to reach its destination is quite high compared to a local network. And when you play a fast-paced game, then time is critical, and when data does not reach its target very fast, then you will experience lag as a result. A term that is associated with lag is the ping, and when you search for servers, then this number here is your ping to that server. And in the scoreboard you can see what ping every single player has to this server, and their pings are all different, as they all connect to the server from a different location. But what is that ping exactly? If you've seen the movie The Hunt for Red October, then you might remember that scene where Sean Connery gave the order to check the distance to the US submarine using one single active sonar ping. The way this works is that your ship sends out an audio signal, which then gets reflected by other objects in the water and bounced back to your own ship, where microphones then hear this reflection. If you measure the time between sending out that audio signal and receiving a reflection, then you can calculate the distance between you and that object. The ping that we talk about for network connections between different devices is pretty much the same thing. Your device sends out an ICMP echo request to another network device, like a game server, which then sends an ICMP echo answer back to your device. Now if you measure the time between sending the request and receiving the answer, then we get the ping or round trip time of the data. So the ping tells us how long the data needs to travel through the copper and fiber optic cables. And the longer it needs, the bigger the difference between what we see on our screen and what the other players see on theirs, which means more lag. So the ping in the server browser is a very important value when you search for a server, as you want your experience to be as lag-free as possible. But it's not just the travel time of the data that can cause you a bad time when you play online. There are also many other factors that can harm your experience. Luckily, we have a very powerful tool in Battlefield 4, which does provide us with a lot of data that helps us to troubleshoot these problems. It's called the Network Graph. The version that I'm going to show you here in this video will be part of the Battlefield 4 Fall Patch 2015, on PC and the Xbox One, as Microsoft allowed the developers to include it on their console. It's sadly not available on the PlayStation 4. On the Xbox One and PC, you can activate the Network Graph by enabling this option here in the menu. In addition to that, you can also use this console command on the PC to switch it on or off. And you can also change the position of the network graph. When we now look at the network graph, then the first value that we see here is the tick rate, which is how many calculations or simulations are done per second. At the time that I make this video here, the default tick rate of Battlefield 4 is 30Hz, so 30 simulations per second. But the game server providers on PC are already testing tick rates of 60, 120 and 144 Hz. So admins on PC can expect to have their providers offer them higher tick rates very soon. But these high tick rates might also come to the console, as the ISLA is currently testing 45, 50 and 55 Hz tick rates in the Battlefield 4 CT on the Xbox One. So eventually the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One might also get tick rates higher than 30 Hz sometime after I release this video. So the tick rate value in the graph allows you to find out about the currently active tick rate. And the higher the tick rate is, the smoother the game feels as it has more data to work with. The next value is the latency, which looks very similar to the ping, but while the ping is an ICMP echo request, the latency value shows us the round trip time of the actual UDP game data that is sent back and forth between the Battlefield 4 game client and the Battlefield 4 game server. The value that you see here is the pure travel time of the game data. It does not include any processing delays of the game server or the game client. Yet it will usually always be a little bit higher than your ping, as the ping is a low level networking function. So how do you know if your latency is good or bad? The developers included a very nice feature that will change the color of the latency to alert you when it's no longer ideal or when it becomes really bad. This also drives the latency performance icons that you can see on the right side of the screen. So you don't need to have the network performance graph open all the time as these icons will alert you when there's something going wrong. Now I do know the current values that trigger the yellow and red color. But I'm not going to mention these numbers here in this video, because the developers are able to very quickly change these numbers in the backend. So if I would say an example that a latency of more than 220 milliseconds triggers the red text and icon, 
then this could be updated at the moment that I publish this video, because the developers can change these values without releasing a new server build or client patch. So what you really need to know is that when you see the yellow text or the yellow icon, then this means that you will begin to see problems in the game. And when the text turns red, then you better join a different server. The next value is the latency variation, which tells you how much the travel time of your game data is changing. A steady latency is ideal, because the server has to constantly adapt to your current latency. So if it goes up and down a lot, then the server will have a hard time to adjust to that. Yellow and red text as well as the performance icons will alert you when there are some problems with your latency variation. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the internet is not just slow in terms of how long a single bit needs to reach its destination, there are also a few other problems that result in a bad experience. One of these problems is the risk of UDP game data simply disappearing on the way between the client and the server, which is called packet loss, and that's obviously bad. The reason why game data uses UDP and not TCP is that online multiplayer games are time sensitive, and in real-time applications you can live with a few dropped packets here and there, but delayed packets are a no-go. So yellow text and icon will tell you that your packet loss is causing you some problems while the red text means that you better search a different server or check your internet connection. The next three items are related to the hit registration. Client fired tells you how many shots you fired. Client hit tells you how many hits your client registered for the bullets that you fired. And server damage bundles tells you the number of hit confirmation bundles that you received from the server. So you might think now that you can simply take the client hits, subtract the server damage bundles value, and then you got the amount of shots that the server rejected. But it's sadly not that easy. When you fire at the tank with the gun that does not deal any damage to it, then you will get a lot of client hits, but not a single confirmation from the server. You only get a confirmation from the server when you actually deal damage. But if you deal damage to a player using C4, grenades, claymores, the mortar, TV missiles or any other weapon that deals splash damage, then you will just get the server damage bundle and no client hit, as that kind of damage or hit registration is done fully server side. Also especially on 64 player servers that run at 30Hz, it is possible that two of your shots deal damage to another player, but the server will only send you one server damage bundle as confirmation. So you cannot directly calculate the amount of rejected hits by just looking at these values that the network graph provides. The next one is very interesting, the server tick. It tells you how much time the server needs to process a single tick. So when the game runs at a tick rate of 30Hz, then this means that it does 30 simulations or calculations per second, which are about 33 milliseconds apart. This means that when it's time for a new tick, then the server begins to process the data it received and runs its calculations. Once it finished that, it will send the results to the clients and then sleep until the next tick happens. Now, the faster the server can finish a tick, the earlier the clients will get a response from the server for the data that they sent to it. This means that the faster the server finishes the calculation of a tick, the lower the delay between the players and the longer it needs, the bigger the delay or lag between players. What is also obvious when you look at the graphic here is that the game will run into massive troubles when the server is not able to finish a tick inside of the time frame defined by the tick rate. So when this becomes a problem, then you will see the yellow performance icon on the right side of the screen, and the text in the network graph will change to yellow. If the server fails to finish a tick before the next one is supposed to happen, then the text will turn red and this is then the point where the admin should better restart the server or where you should leave and join a different one. Then there's the server offset, which tells you how much what you see on your screen differs from the perspective of the server. There's no performance icon for this value, so if you see issues in the game like rubber banding, then you should have a look at the network performance graph and check if this value here is displayed in yellow or red. And the last of the values is the downstream bandwidth, which simply tells you how much bandwidth the game uses currently. On servers that have a high player count or a higher tick rate, you will notice that the game will generate more traffic downstream than on lower player count or lower tick rate servers. This value is not linked to any performance icon, nor does it change its color. Even though I would wish that we would get warnings in case that the player's up or downstream bandwidth becomes an issue as that could be really helpful on those 60, 120 and 144Hz tick rate servers. So these are the values of the network graph and the performance icons that are driven by these values. 
but there are two more icons that you might see when you join a server that runs at a tick rate of 60 Hz or more. Generally speaking, your frame rate always needs to be higher than the tick rate of the server, in order to get the most out of the higher tick rate. So if you play on a 60 Hz server with less than 60 frames per second, then this is not ideal and you will see the yellow warning icon as a result. If your frame rate is significantly lower than the tick rate, then the icon will turn red and you should try to reduce some of the graphic settings in order to increase your frame rate. Another factor is the refresh rate of your monitor, because if you play on a 120Hz tick rate server at 120 frames per second, then your monitor also needs to use a refresh rate of 120Hz, as otherwise you will not see those 120 frames. So if your monitor uses a refresh rate of 60Hz while you play on a 120Hz server at 120 frames per second, then the game will show you this icon here, alerting you that this setup is not ideal. If you have a gaming monitor that supports rates of 120 or 144 Hz, then you need to use a DisplayPort or Dual Link DVI cable, as only these cables support rates higher than 60 Hz. If you have that, then you just need to go to the graphics options in game and change the resolution to use that higher refresh rate. So, this is the network graph and the performance icons that will be part of the Battlefield 4 Fall Patch 2015, which will help us a lot to figure out why we have problems when playing the game. But besides joining a different server, what else can you do when you have problems or how can you avoid them in the first place? First of all, always try to use a good old network cable to connect your PC or console to your router. And only use Wi-Fi or Powerline when it is impossible to use a network cable. This alone will avoid a lot of the packet loss and latency issues that many people are suffering from. Also, did you ever call the support of the internet service provider and were told that you should try to switch your router on and off? This is actually a good suggestion as these consumer grade products do tend to fail the longer they are powered up. A super easy solution to never have to restart your router manually again is to use a power socket timer. Just set it to something like 4 in the morning where it will then cut the power and force the router to restart. If you tried all that but still suffer from packet loss to servers in a specific region or of a specific provider, then you should try to write down the IP address of such a server and then contact your internet service provider as they might be able to change their routing to get rid of the packet loss. And last but not least, when you do a server search, then always join the one that has the lowest ping and is located inside of your own region. So I hope that you found the information in this video helpful and if you have any further questions, then please leave them in the comments down below and I will as always try to answer as many of them as possible. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.